welcome to Survival Homestead Teaching Farm. Today I would like to talk to you a little bit about myself. I'm just trying to give you a background about myself. So my name is Amanda and I started out I wanted to be in the medical field. I first went to school and I got my associate degree and my associate degree was in nursing. I knew I wanted more education. I knew I needed something better. So I went on to school. I got my bachelor's uh, in continuing studies. Um, continuing studies, uh, it's sort of not named correctly because it is medical related and it was to be able to run medical offices or teach educational classes in the medical field. So that's what that was geared towards. That was not enough. <laughs> so I continued. And I went on and I got my master's degree in public health. I really enjoyed my graduate work. And that's where I learned a lot of information, a lot of things. The way that the program is set up really teaches you. You don't just memorize it, you learn it. And so I really liked my master's degree program. And then I went to chiropractic school and soon found out that my real passion was naturopathic medicine and throughout all this I lived in many states and during this time there was a period that I was homeless and I had to live in my car. Uh, naturopathic school taught me a lot about how the body actually works. Um, I studied alongside of many uh, regular medical doctors who were working on their primary care physician doctorate degree. I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed expanding my knowledge in those areas. In naturopathic school, I concentrated in muscle response testing, herbal studies, and iridology. Uh, now, if anybody doesn't know uh, what those things are, Look them up, they're so interesting, um, especially iridology. Uh, iridology is looking and studying and diagnosing through the iris of the eye, the, the colored part of the eye. And you can tell so much about your history, even your parents' history. You can tell things that might pop up in the future. It's like a prerequisite. Uh, your your ir irises and people don't realize that your iris is more accurate than your own fingerprint. I, I did go to an herbal school and um, this was separate from my naturopathic physician um, education. It is through the School of Botanical Medicine. It's with Dr. Patrick Jones. And if anybody has ever seen any of his videos on YouTube, uh, they're, they're wonderful. He's an amazing teacher. And I took his school, and, and, and honestly, I learned more in that school, in that herbal school, than I ever learned when I was in my graduate programs. I never learned that much information. And it's a very reasonable price. I'm going to leave the link to his school so that you can go and check it out. I mean, it's very inexpensive, especially for the amount of information that you receive. And it's online so that you can do it at any time. It's a lifetime uh, access, so you can do it at any time at your own pace. And it's just a wealth of information. It really, really is. I highly recommend doing it because I learned so much in that. Now, I am an affiliate with them, so if you use my link, it does help me out. However, even if I wasn't an affiliate, I would still be saying this right now because it is such a great wealth of information. And he's, he's a retired veterinarian, so he also goes into telling you about medicinal things uh, in depth, uh, like a particular herb in depth for you how that will benefit you, your family, and your pets. So in a survival or emergency situation with your animals, you will know what to do. Knowledge that I have received from 
the herbal school is so valuable it is so valuable especially with how things are going in today's world if poop hits the fan knowing and understanding foraging and how to make your own medications you know that is valuable information um, for you and for your animals so I highly recommend you go and you check out his school and even if you don't want to go through his school use this link uh, to go to his website and he he sells the herbs too and he sells the tinctures already made he, he has a lot of things on there but if you want to make the tinctures and things yourself I talk about that in my book in the 125 survival herbs for beginners so of course I I recommend you get in that book as well because that one will tell you how to make the tinctures how to make salves what to do with a poultice um, how to make a, a decoction how to make an infusion all these things I would highly recommend you 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 checking out that book and uh, going to the link for the botanical medicine so there's three states in the United States that will not allow their citizens to looked at by a naturopathic physician uh, even if they are licensed even if they have you know all the education and doctorate degrees and everything they are not allowed to practice and unfortunately I'm in one of those states the laws uh, uh, for naturopathic medicine um, hasn't changed but I hope that they will soon especially for these three states if that does change I would love to open my own practice up so I hone my interest more into educating and that's one of the reasons why I have a YouTube channel now I also write books I have written 125 survival herbs for beginners now it's on Amazon I've also written other books one of them is called natural health in the new COVID world now it's a little outdated and I am going to be taking that off of Amazon soon but the majority of the information in there I'm going to be transferring to another book and it's going to have a different title and but it's going to be based more on not so much the COVID stuff but more on general natural health all you have to do is just search my name on Amazon just type in Dr. Amanda P. Cartwright and that will bring up all the books that I have I also have notebooks on Amazon um, one is a goat notebook and one is a rabbit notebook and what those are is basically a health assessment an exam for the animals that you have on your homestead and so it takes you through all the things that you need to do in your health assessment like keeping up with when you clip the hooves you trim the hooves or um, keeping up with when you do the CDNT shots or you know when you clip the rabbits uh, nails or you know any kind of health thing that uh, happens it's a good place to just keep up with uh, that medical knowledge because of my homestead experience and because of my herbal knowledge I was asked to be a part of prepper camp now we've talked about prepper camp before in our videos however I want to emphasize that prepper camp is absolutely amazing um, and I'm not just saying that because I'll be a speaker there this year I've went the last couple of years just as someone who is learning and being educated and I really think that it's something that everybody needs to check out you know it, it's a three-day event it, it's on a campground so they do have a place for campers and then they have a place for tents but I, I normally just get a a hotel room you find a lot of like-minded individuals there and you learn so many amazing things they have classes every hour anything from uh, tanning hides to weaving your own thread uh, and yarn or canning or uh, I mean there's just so many things there's a cast iron class teaches you all about cast iron I've taken that class a couple of times and I really like that one you can pick and choose whatever classes that you like 
it's a good thing to to attend with all of my accomplishments I've had obstacles along the way many obstacles something that I would like to share and not a lot of people know this about me because I have been able to mask this and I've been able to come up with coping mechanisms to make me look like I'm normal. I was diagnosed with expressive and receptive language disorders uh, with a phonological disorder, uh, with sensory disorders, and I also lip read and a lot of people don't realize that about me. I never really mentioned a whole lot about it until I had to when when the the pandemic uh, happened and people started wearing masks it made it to where I couldn't understand any language because people were covering their mouths it's like a hidden disability that people don't really know much about the expressive part of my language disorder means that I don't express correctly and the receptive part means that I don't receive information incorrectly and so you might say a particular thing to me and I take it totally different or just the opposite. And it, it, it's, it's, it's frustrating because I'm not able to have close relationships because it comes across to people that I am mean or being untruthful and it's not that at all I just have a lot of communication issues and I do work with a speech language pathologist and she works with me and I can never just make it go away it is a disability and it gets in the way of everyday activity and the phonological part is the is part of the reason why I need a lip read. The the language centers of my brain is not like a normal person's. And unfortunately, I have to visually see language being spoken in order to understand it. And even even then, I may not receive it correctly and take it completely wrong unfortunately it's something that I've lived with for a long time I wasn't diagnosed till later in life I was first misdiagnosed I went to college uh, for the first time when I was failing everything and that was in my undergraduate degree program and so I knew something was wrong so I went and I was tested and they said that I had ADHD and I think that that is one of those diagnoses that they just put on people just because they don't know what's going on. And so many people have that diagnosis. But fortunately, I went back and I was retested at the school that I was attending. And they went back and looked at everything in my past, all my grades, all my testing uh, from when I was younger, everything that they could get their hands on, they analyzed and researched for me and they said it was 100% definitely language disorders. The person that first diagnosed me correctly, they sat me down and they said, you know, college is a waste of time. Don't do this. You'll be wasting a lot of money. And people, they, and they said that people with language disorders, they just don't make it. They just don't do well. Um, because of the communication, um, especially with the field that I wanted to go into and being able to see patients and do things with patients and diagnose, they said, do not do it. But, you know, I'm a very independent woman. If somebody says no, I say yes. And I said, I'm going to prove you wrong. And guess what? I did. No matter what your obstacles are, don't stop. No matter what they are, don't stop. Don't let those obstacles get in your way. Because I am living proof that you can 
make it. You can do it. You can do what you set your mind to do. I just wanted to make this video um, just to kind of give you a, a background on me. We are at almost 200 subscribers. So please, I'm asking you, please, please, please share this video. Let's reach our goal. Our goal is 500 right now. Thank you for watching today. I hope you have a very blessed day. Bye. Thank you.